They've had yet to explain why they need the quintessence in order to fight the nemesis. But anyway, okay. Let's go ahead and save the game here. This is... Uh, let's see, um, starting part four, I guess. All right, after the last medal. So we're going to go and see where Dr. Sartorius is. So we need to put Jupiter into the sunlight. That should be it. And sure enough, just the way that uh, we saw on the map, this is in uh, the northern ice region. And this is called the Asylum, so this must be some kind of mental institution. And it looks so friendly, doesn't it? It looks like cell blocks. We have filing cabinets, looks like. Okay, before we go further, I just should I should uh, give you guys a fair warning that uh, of all the places that we've been, this is by far going to be the most disturbing. Um, it involves Sartorius's experiments on people, which were pretty um, um, nasty, I should say. So, uh, there is, there are some, com some gruesome scenes coming up, so just fair warning. Of all, of all the objections that, that fans had about how serious, um, the story had taken a turn in, in this installment of the Zork series, this was probably the most cited area as to why people didn't like it, because, uh, it, it gets pretty, uh, grim here for quite a while without very much, uh, of the usual levity. Um, that Zork games are accustomed to. See, we have a flashlight. Okay, pointing it at our eyes. <laughs> That's smart. Looks like he was inspecting women. Also looks like he's freaking tall. Anatomical sketches. I believe there's one or two that we can look in here. Let's see. There's one, I think. Malvo. So the doctor has a file on him. We already knew that he had some kind of disease. Augur 5th, 923. Dear good doctor, I find myself getting weaker and I find I have strange fevers which leave me sweating profusely. At nights I burn as if on fire. I thought I would be ready for death. I have spent my life preparing for the afterlife. But in my heart I am not prepared. I am ready to do experiments, risky as they may be. My mind is open. Yours truly, Father Malvo. Estuary, 20th, 924. Thank you, Doctor. You are truly a misunderstood genius. For the first time in many months, I have hope of a life without pain. Knowing our need for further apprentices, 
I spoke to Madame Sophia of the Frigid River Branch Conservatory. I believe she is the perfect person to assist us in our quest. Francois. Dear Erasmus, I cannot sleep. The weight of invention... Yeah, the weight of invention presses upon me, I believe. I believe, Doctor, that we have discovered a science, a philosophy, that will re relieve us of the binds of mortality and of our bodies. It is a science that will surely transform the world. Yorick will praise this great work, Francois. It looks like Dr. Sartorius' first name is Erasmus. That's quite a name he's got. Okay. So let's see, anything on this side? Yes. Lucian Kane file. Name, Kane, Lucian, status, well. Not admitting at this time. Date of birth, 10 of Oracle, 920 GUE. Place of birth, the Castle Iron Dune, south of Aragain. Or Aragain, however you pronounce that. Previous medical condition, chronic respiratory situl virus, as an infant. Was hospitalized on three occasions prior to 925. So that was a uh, disease he must have had as a little baby. Previous magical conditions, normal. Previous surgeries, none. Allergies, none. Prescribed treatment. Father complains of rebelliousness and cowardice on the part of the subject. Behavior to be closely monitored. Father to be prescribed mild sedative. <laughs> Guess his, uh, Lucian was really getting to his father there. Another file on this side. Patient X. Evil, bloated, gaseous humors out of balance. Helium, helium injection should empty excess liquid. Oh, that's fun. Still like some ramblings here. So, it talks about a helium injection to get out of excess liquid. Well, that may be some a clue. We'll see. And file here. Zoe Wolf. That name sounds familiar. Name Wolf Zoe. Status deceased. Date of birth 14 November 900 GUE. Place of birth Fralsham in the Grey Mountains. The Grey Mountains actually is where we are right now as well. Previous medical condition ocular guy guy. Ugh. Ocular gy gyrocris. Ah, I can't pronounce that. Resulting in chronic mental imbalance. Previous magical condition. None. Previous surgeries. Uterine zaproscopy. Preparatory. Hmm. Something. Some kind of procedure was done on her uterus. Drug use. Various. Prozorc. Zithium. Dzorkpan. Uh, I think a lot of those are just parodies of, of real-life uh, drugs. Allergies. Palapus mites. Prescribed treatment. When we first received the patient at the asylum, she was suffering from chronic delusions, phantoms, and it cuts off there. So we have a very mentally disturbed woman here. We don't know exactly how she's related to Alexandria, but she definitely seems to be from the same family. I think that's it. Yep, step outside there, so let's continue on around here. This is level one, by the way. You can see the big zero one there. Um, it's a tower, so there's probably several um, levels above us. And isn't this a happy sight? Heads on mountings. Here we have what looks like a freezer. Inside we have a safe. Looks 
like a bunch of blood samples in there. Right, well, I shouldn't just say samples. I mean, those are pretty sizable. What do we got here? I think we can put this in there. Yeah, okay. Put this in there. And... Okay, looks like a stomach with a key inside it. And we get the numbers 2018. So that might be part of the combination to open up the uh, safe. Let's see what happens if we just put one of these in. some kind of growth in there. That's nice and disgusting. Huh. So uh, that, that pretty much acts like an x-ray as far as I can tell. Something should go here, but not that. A whole bunch of sketches of the skull, or the head, I guess. We have psychotic, pacifist, Amnesiac, Genius, okay, so we have, I mean, I guess that's how he labeled those patients that he had before their heads were removed. Um, at this point, I can't say whether I'm sure that they were uh, already dead by the time he took off their heads, but who knows for sure. It's like, here we have various parts of the brain with, I guess, emotions associated with it, or mental faculties. We have love up here, long-term memory in the middle part, sex in the back, um, short-term memory on the right back, aggression, right center, and logical reasoning down on this side here. That's an elevator. Close the doors. Let's see, can we get... Yeah, the only, the only accessible floors are the basement, besides the first floor. And so we will go down there, but first I want to make sure yeah, I think that was everything, because that just goes back outside where we were. Okay, that's the emergency alarm, I guess. Alright, basement. automatic doors on this elevator. You gotta do it yourself. Okay. Oh, look. A place to store cadavers. <laughs> How cheerful. Oh, 
Well, now we know how he got all those heads upstairs. Nothing in here. Same one. Um. Not having a lot of good luck here as far as finding something of interest. There's a body with no head. Yay, we get to take it with us. I told you this part was really morbid. Nothing there. About this one. Cadaver here with head. I don't think we need anything more here. So we put the headed cadaver here, and sure enough, we're gonna have to lop its head off. Pretty sure this doctor is insane. At this point, okay, we got a severed head. I really don't think there's anything else here to be found. So let's go. Well, let's see. Right quick, just yeah. I don't think any of the files on the far side here actually will let you look into them. So I think that's it. The ambient noise for this one is great too, you know, I keep hearing people screaming and crying out in pain. I have a feeling that key that we saw in the stomach has to do with putting it in one of these locks. Now, you'll notice, um, or you'll recall, that here, a bunch of heads on spikes, but this one is empty. So sure enough, we put the head on it. <laughs> reminds me of a joke! Knock, knock! Who's there? Oh? There's somebody there. What is this, some kind of a joke? A joke! <laughs> what were we talking about? Hey. Do I know you? Now, I'm willing to accept the fact that we can, you know, stimulate these parts of the brain and maybe get him to to think certain things, maybe, but how is he talking? He doesn't have any lungs. Heads are parts of bodies. I am a head. Thus, it would be only logical to conclude that I must be part of a body. I must also infer that a different part of my brain must be feeling rather, um, concerned about this issue right now. Mm, 
guy was scheduled for a lobotomy. He wanted out. Stole a key. <laughs> How crazy is that? God's caught him. <gasps> Strip search time. He did the only thing he could do. <laughs> Works for me. All right, so uh, talking about a patient, either him or someone he knew who didn't want to uh, be given a frontal lobotomy, ended up swallowing one of the keys. So that must be in that uh, the stomach, the key in the stomach that we found. God, you're beautiful. Mm. Come in a little closer, okay? I. Uh... I think I love you. Let me tell you a little secret. 36, 24, 36. And those three numbers are actually the beginning of the combination to the safe that we have. And that concludes the other two numbers that we saw in the x-ray for the full combination, I believe. Let's see what this last uh, button does. You want a piece of me right here, right now? I'll chew your freaking face off. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely the aggression area. So basically all of these buttons were hitting these parts here. Alright, now I think I put this back here. Then I look up top. Ah, here we go. All right. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, 36 is here. Yep. Okay. You just have to click the number. Uh, 24. 36. Um, 20. Yeah, 20. And 18. There we go. Take this out. I'm actually surprised I did that on the first try. Um, most of the time in the past when I had to do that, I had to try it several times because I would keep hitting just to the wrong number, which is kind of annoying. Okay, we put this here. I think, is it? No, here. Yep. Pours out the solution, it dissolves the stomach, um, and sure enough, here's the key. So now we can head up. Up is going to be the top floor. Yes. So, sure enough, we get to go all the way up to the top now. This is almost certainly where Sartorius's laboratory is. And as always, forgot to open the door. Those used to get me. I'd get up to a floor and I'd be like, why can't I leave? I believe there's just one door here. Check the hallway. Is there one more? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that's. You can see here is a really crazy pulsating door. And there is actually a way to get through. Bunch of electrical transformers. Some books here. 
Planetary coordinates for the pure soul. The connection between birth and the stars. The rheumatological properties. I'm sorry, the thermatological. The thermatological properties of music and the five notes. And we have the embryo. Uh, musical conception and creation. Alright, starts uh, from another page. Subject to him is that he sees the heavens open and the angels of Yurik ascending and descending, and bequeathing to this one earth in perfect conception the pure birth of the corpus spiritus, the perfect human spirit. The mystical conception can occur but every seventh solstice with a perfect alignment of the sphere of the fixed stars follows the sphere of the planets, Saturnax, Eupiron, Mers, Venus, Her and Hermes, the sphere of the moon and then the sphere of the four elements. The mystical conception followed by the pure birth lies fallow without the life lived in harmony with the spheres. And here it looks like it's just a uh, picture of a conception producing a zygote, which is the first stages of human uh, birth. Or human formation, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Here we see what is probably a human egg. There we see there is some sperm attempting to fertilize it. We see one enter. Fertilization occurs. And none of the other sperm are allowed to enter. <laughs> it's kind of bizarre, but here, you know, you get uh, kind of a weird little sex ed course in five microscopes. It's very bizarre. This whole, this whole area of the game is really bizarre. A uh, bed with very stained sheets and a hypodermic needle here. Conceived in purity. How? Miraculously. Divinely. And the child, her destiny will be great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and your name will be blessed for bringing this child to the great empire. Mm. It's time. So perhaps there is some kind of artificial fertilization process here. So it seems likely that uh, Zoe was, whose name means life, so that's appropriate, was um, Alexandria's mother. And Alexandria was created artificially in that case. So we have some kind of electrical thing here. It's like an electric chair. You don't look so good. You're here for a treatment, aren't you? I'm sorry you're not on the schedule. You'll have to wait in the waiting room. Okay, that's long enough. I'm Dr. Sartorius. And I'll give you a treatment you'll never forget. Sit. Sit down! I'll get things ready. <laughs> well, looks like um, one of Sartorius's patients has... Uh escaped her cell and survived here and believes that she is the doctor. Great. And of course, when she says sit down, she means it. You have to sit down at this point. Brace yourself. It's looking glass time.
So now you can see that we're all really kind of wobbly and distorted. It's a temporary condition, but as you recall, there was another wobbly door over here, and when we're in this state, let's see, when we're in this state, we can actually pass through it. I just need to remember where it was. There it opens, and then when we pass through, it finally, the condition wears off, thankfully, because that's just annoying. This is a secret elevator, so there's no keys, it's just press up or down. And finally, we arrive in uh, Sartorius's lab area. instruments. I would be willing to suspect that this is Sartorius's father who began um, this, this alchemical search. And sure enough, we have a journal here. Although I believe this is Sartorius's journal, um, but I guess we'll see here. Um, part journal and part photo album, it seems. My first surgery, it was magical. That's kind of a creepy way to describe it, but okay. Maj 7th, uh, 919, and oh good, we get to read Sartorius's handwriting again. Magic no longer interests me. The Enchanter's Guild now seems concerned only with power and money. Alchemy, the chance to solve the great mystery of the universe, is all I can think of now. There is so much suffering, so much pain and death. My father's science leaves much work to be done. But I will find the Philosopher's Stone and prove his name within the mo mocking circles of science. Oracle 7th, 924. I am frustrated. I have devoted my career to completing my father's quest. But now I realize one man cannot find the alchemical secret alone. Each element requires absolute mastery. Each metal requires each metal requires absolute mastery. Each metal requires its own adept. I must enlist others in my search, but I must take care. Alchemy draws vain fools in search of common gold, and I must seek out only my more enlightened brothers. Mumbember 20th, 929. Every day I get closer to the truth. The others all want the elixir, each for his own mundane reasons. I, on the other hand, search for the final spiritual truth. One day soon, I will possess the secret of eternal life with the quintessence. I will have perfect knowledge, knowledge enough to halt the growing evil that threatens us. This is powerful magic. And there is powerful, and there is a powerful resistance, but we must we must not let it stop our work. You can see he's referring to the nemesis, perhaps. October twentieth, nine twenty nine. The fifth essence is the quintessence, the elixir of life, the philosopher's stone. Alchemist fools through the centuries have looked at metals, vapors, and gases, and love. What rot! It is none of this. It is blood. This much my father knew. The blood. The essence of innocence. But where does this blood exist? How does one distill its purity? I am surrounded by blood every day. The spilt blood of the suffering. Yet the answers elude me. I am a disappointment. Yet it seems that later he did actually find out how to do it if uh, Zoe is any indication, and Alexandria, of course. Here we have a portrait. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Zartorius' father or just Zartorius as a younger man. There's an actual photo of the, I will not say, good doctor. <laughs> it's like a skull of someone like a cyclops. And some notes. Maj 15th, 925. Dr. Sartorius, 
It has been called to our attention that you have been practicing unorthodox and unauthorized magic. As you know, it is in violation of Magic Code number 6547 for a non-guild member to engage in any magical practice. Cease and desist, or we will, fire, we will file for Fajunctive Relief. The Enchanter's Guild. John 17th, 945. Dr. Sartorius, I understand you are still perfecting the science of the ritual, but we must act now. If we do not, the quintessence will slip through our fingers. I know he has threatened even you, haunting the asylum. Our work must be completed at the Temple of the Ancients. Write, and I will arrange to meet you there. Soon, Doctor. Sophia. Dear Dr. Freudian, Perhaps Freudian? I don't know. <laughs> Open your puny mind. Madness is a disease, not a state of mind. I see that every day in my patients, forgotten waifs who have only me to defend them. And defend them I shall. Like any disease, if madness can be studied, it can be cured. How can I cure the body of disease if I am forbidden to open the body to study it? If I am denied funding for x-rays and medication and a staff of physicians, my asylum should be a place of progress, not the final resting place for the damned. Dr. Sartorius Good doctor, since your cure, my son, has, my son has kept something of his magic eye. He still sees things that cannot be seen, and for a fortnight he has wept for you day and night. He begged me to write you a warning. There is a great evil waiting for you. You will soon be dead, he cries, the asylum destroyed your great work unfinished. He fears powers have been disturbed, and the innocent will pay. Good luck, Doctor. May York be with you. SJM. Okay. So that must be an old letter, considering we have the skull with the magic eye in it now. Um, perhaps one of his patients was a person who just had one eye, but that eye could see things that no one else could. Okay. Let's see what we have here. I believe this is just a scale model of the asylum structure. But it also seems that it's a button for turning something on. So we'll just leave it in the on position, I think. Let's see what that does. I don't see any way to get over there. Alright, we have a book called The Blood Alchemist by Dr. Louis Sartorius, so that must be the name of his father. My son, I now lie on my deathbed. I leave so much work undone. I sense I am close to the truth, yet the quintessence still eludes me. There are rumors of an ancient underground temple, a shrine which has the power to create the Philosopher's Stone. It was created by an engineer named Agrippa, but his work disappeared. You must find it, your loving father. Alright, so here we have elements. And, ah, here we go, the purification of tin. Okay. So here we have these symbols. I may actually want to write those down just in case. I'm not sure if they'll come into play yet, because it's been a while since I've done this game. But let's copy down the symbols just in case. We have fluorine, followed by helium. We have oxygen. And then at the end we have hydrogen and oxygen. Table 12G. <laughs> so yeah, this must be a big book. Um, yeah, see, fluorine, it says 42. 
It's the answer for life, the universe, and everything, of course. Helium is 60, either 60 or 68. It's kind of hard to see the writing there. Um, oxygen is 7. Hydrogen is 1. Okay, so we have all that information. If we need to come back, we can, but for now. Okay, this is just a section of a book here, which we don't know the title for. Slide zones by performing extensive testing on the miniature models. Reportedly, the miniature hall of the opera Frobazica was said to work as a kind of celestial control for the greater structure itself. And in fact, the only way the concert hall could be properly lit was by switching on the stage lights in the model. This relationship later became problematic when the diva Maria Callist grew so substantial in person that neither she nor her enlarged entourage could fit their plump fingers inside the miniature opera, and had no choice but to sing the season entirely in the dark. Eventually, Dr. Coep became so obsessed with the science of miniaturization that he stopped working in the larger scale altogether. His later works grew smaller and smaller until they could no longer be seen by the naked eye. His famous bottomographical map of the great underground empire, carved out of a single grape, led to an appointment at state uh, led to an appointment as state miniaturist. He re his revisionist rendering of the massive statue of Lord Dimwit Flathead, the excessive, once towering nine bolt Bloits high above the frigid river valley, now etched upon a lone grain of rice, is said to be of the best likeness of the late, probably Flathead. But anyway, that's your clue that if you mess with this here, you'll create um, something that'll actually happen in the real uh, asylum. So basically, this place is this top section here is open now. Um, so when we go up, it should also be open to the sky. Those look like the lunar phases, but we can't zoom in on that one. Can't zoom in there. Can't zoom there. So we'll just go through the door. Bunch of electrified buttons. Probably not the best idea to just go ahead and tap those right now. bunch of sketches of the human body. <laughs> the hand gives us a little shaka there. What's up, brah? Can we come around here? Oh, isn't this fun? Ugh. It's, uh, skeleton of a baby shouldn't be animated. That's just bizarre. Yuck. That's the keypad. This is the arm again. Okay, I believe we need to get in there, but first I need something to basically break the glass. So let me think. Did I miss something over here? skull through it, but I guess I can't. I can't pick up any of this. And that's just the elevator. Dang it. Let's see, can I... 
out. Hmm. Ah, here we go. That was the part I was trying to get into, and I couldn't. Here we go. Hammer. <laughs> 